Companies have now been shown in two semi-finals. Yeah. Never, no one has seen your performance yet. How do you think that would affect the voters? Um, well, I think there are pros and cons to being uh, going directly to the final. I mean, I think in a way, obviously, there's less pressure for us because we know that we're now in the final, and it was uh, it, it was a bit it was upsetting to see some of the other people go in the semi-finals. But I also think uh, it, it could be. Not a great thing because people will only see the song once, but we're really hoping that it's one of those songs and productions that you just see it and you love it the first time you see it. And, uh, and let's face it, the song is so catchy, the first time you hear the chorus, everybody knows the words. So it's, uh, I think that hopefully will be fun. Yeah, they know what to do. First roll, yeah. Hi, it's Pete Fenner from the Icelandic delegation. And I have a question for uh, Pete Waterman. Um, I think it's right, you had, 20, you had 22 number one hit singles, didn't you? And I'm wondering why you decided to put your life on the line with the televoters and, and do it again. Oh. And whether this was a song that you had on, had on the shelf or whether you wrote it specifically for this. Uh, no, this is a brand new song. Um, and we decided that, you know, um, really life is about challenges. And we like the challenge, my God, not frightened. We've had challenges all our life. The biggest challenge we had actually was getting here thanks to a bloody ice cream and the volcano. That was a bigger challenge than Rhino Sun was. Then we got a question from Then we got a question from the guy, all the in the back and then one from Australian radio. Hello, this is Brad from Germany. And to the composer, first I have to say thank you for such wonderful hits at the end of the 80s. They brought me through my childhood. Thank you. <laughs> you have been dominating the charts worldwide with artists like Kyle Minogue, Rick Astley. How many records have you been sold in that period and are you still in contact with Kylie? <laughs> yeah, we, um, other thing is we, we never fell out with any of our artists, so we still, um, you know, talk to them, and I see Rick Astley's got a new record out this week, but I think it's going to be a very big hit, which is great to see all this time, you know, kind of 20 years on, and we're still there. Um, I think we asked, we amassed something like 500 million records, um, but you know what? We're as good as this competition. All those number ones that we've had, they don't count now, because, you know, you're here tomorrow night, anything goes. So, you know, that we're the most successful writers ever for this competition. That don't matter tomorrow night because anybody can win. And that's the exciting thing. It really is quite exciting. You know, I, you know we, we came out here and I came here last night and, and I saw Mike late and I said, it's amazing this. This is just, you, nothing, nothing, you do not know what to expect as you walk into this auditorium and people are just full of enthusiasm, mm. you know, and full of music and everybody's happy. What an amazing conversation. Nobody's, you know, it's all about music, but at the end of the day, everybody's, it's full of love, man. <laughs> <laughs> love in It's all about love. <laughs> then we've got a question from Alistair Berg from Australian Radio. Hi guys, I have a question for Mr. Waterman as well. Um, it's been 20 years, you must have your reasons why you didn't try the Eurovision before. Maybe you'd like to share them with us? And now you're here, what's what, as you expected and what is completely different to what you're expecting? Um, well, I don't know about Mike, but I've, um, we were too busy in the 80s. I mean, you know, I mean, we couldn't turn around. I mean, we didn't have time to, to, to even think about it. It wasn't possible. Um, no, I am serious, this is a bit of a shock because you don't know what to expect. It's nothing like what you think it is. And, um, you know, if, you know, because obviously we sat down and we thought about it, you know, and, and everybody, by the way, everybody is an expert in Eurovision, right? <laughs> if, every, if we'd have written a song the way that every expert told us that European songs work, after, you know, you've got to raise into the chorus, so you've got to lift, the, change the key every chorus. You've got to, you know, it's got to be soft but loud, slow but 
fast, medium tempo, catchy but not too catchy. You've got to have fiddle players, you've got to have banjo players, you've got to have rock violas. So at the end of the day, we just wrote what we normally write. <laughs> that was the easiest way to write it. Yeah, we got a question there. Please stand up. Hello, I'm Katerina Gagan, a St. Petersburg Russian. I have two questions to Josh. First one, which is your most favorite Eurovision song? And uh, if you could sing a part of it, maybe not this year. And uh, the second question is, could you share with us the most exciting moment of your life? Okay. Oh. <laughs> wow. The most exciting. I'm sure I've got a few, but uh, I'll have to keep it under wraps. Yeah. <laughs> This song is it from this year's Eurovision? Ever? Ever. Okay. Love, shine a light, and I keep going around. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're gonna make it To be honest, I have, uh, I have many favourites, but uh, oh my goodness, Waterloo as well. That's a fantastic song. I tell you what, but the thing is, Eurovision is. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't really need this anymore. But thank you very much. It's very kind. Um, but Eurovision. That's why it's so great because uh, it's a real showcase for the whole of Europe and there are so many great songs. But I'm going to talk about the most exciting moment of my life now. Um, I've got to say, I think there's another one shortly to follow tomorrow, but so far it's, uh, I've got to say, I was in, um, oh, you've made me really think about this one. Uh, you might think I've not had a very exciting life. <laughs> Oh, actually, uh, the day I passed my driving test. <laughs> yeah. And then I knew I was a man. <laughs> did you make it in the first? Yes, I did. Yeah, I, had, uh, I passed on the first time and I had one minor. So <laughs> speedy. Speedy. No, no, speedy. <laughs> <laughs> well, other questions? We've got one more from Norway, is it? I'm kind of tempted now to ask Graham about his most exciting moment. Yeah. <laughs> Share it with us, but have you got remember it. <laughs> <laughs> but have you got a favourite Eurovision song, you know, from you know, years and years? I suppose uh, um, Well no, no, my my two favourites are uh, from the past are uh, all kinds of everything. Just because that's kind of my, my original Eurovision memory. And because that was the you know Ireland back then. Nothing ever good happened, and uh, we won a competition. We were delighted with ourselves, and, uh, and then Mount McNeil. Um, I, I like. Floss out to Waterloo. Uh, you know, it's Waterloo. Do we have some questions over here? Hi Josh, um, looking to your future plans, yep. um, last year after Jane represented the UK, she went on to a successful career with the Sugar Babes. Do you think there's any chance that by the end of the year you'll be a member of JLS? <laughs> <laughs> JLS. I can't, I, to be honest, I think uh, one of their forte's is dancing and I think uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to try and, uh, try and get a few lessons if I was to join JLS, but now I'm, uh, I'm hoping that afterwards, uh, sounds very nice. <laughs> I'm hoping that um, after the Eurovision something uh, something will come up and that I'll be able to have something big with stature like that. But I, I would love to, you know, anything is good for me and uh, I'm just enjoying the whole experience. So whatever happens now is just a bonus. Thank you. I think that's all the main here, right? Having a yeah. 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 Do we have everyone can hear it? <laughs> <laughs> um, do we have some? Did you have a question? Yeah, stand up. Hi Josh, it's John from Out of the City, Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, Graham mentioned the reputation of Eurovision in the UK, and it's probably fair to say it's not very credible. Um, how are you going to change that? I disagree with you. I think um, Eurovision, I think you have to have guts to go on the Eurovision because, you know, it can either make or break you. Um, and I think it's uh, because people are so passionate in Eurovision. And I think, as Pete said earlier, everybody's right. So you have to kind of get it right. But I think all I'm going to do is uh, is be myself. I'm going to be true to myself. I mean, I'm not. I know that I'm probably not the strongest singer in the competition, but I'll give it a damn good shot. And uh, and I'm just going to enjoy myself because this whole experience has been. Uh, this is the most exciting moment of my life now, and I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. And I'm just going to give everything I've got. One more from Iceland, right? 
Yeah, indeed. Uh, I've got a question for Graham because uh, we're trying to cobble up some entertaining um, commentary for Iceland, and I'm uh, wondering uh, whether you've got any tips for us on what you learned from last year, Graham, taking over from Terry. Um, I, I, all I do is just uh, watch it, and but, I mean, it's a really lazy job, anyway. I mean, I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, <laughs> I'm just watching television along with Britain and saying some smart arse things in between, uh, which probably people are saying in their own homes. But it gives me a job and a reason to be here, so I'm delighted. Uh, if, you're, if, I, you know, if Iceland want to they pirate my commentary, uh, feel free. Uh, you get a tin can and a piece of string into our booth. <laughs> um, that was the final question for Josh and the UK delegation. We will have a photo.